This is the Ordinary Buffet Plus Copper Peptide Serum. And I'm going to be comparing that against the Skincare Revolution, Revolution Skincare uh, Copper Peptide Serum. Actually, uh, really quick, I just want to say, purchase all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsored ads or videos. So if you want to help support the channel, check out nobsbeauty.com. Check out my Patreon community or click on the Amazon link below and subscribe if you haven't already. So I was asked by a subscriber recently, Lou, they asked if the Ordinary Buffet Copper Peptide Serum was worth the little bit of extra money in comparison to the Revolution Skincare Copper Peptide Serum. And that question kind of made me think, you know what, I've been asked that a couple times before, these two specifically, and I thought I should do a versus video on them because I certainly have an opinion on that topic. So I thought I'd do a little comparison of them today. So let me just start right off with packaging. Both use a dropper bottle. The Ordinary is a little bit more opaque. Well, the Skincare Revolution goes for a frosted bottle, but both of these, for the most part, protect the ingredients from any light exposure, although I'm not a huge fan of dropper bottles because the ingredients are exposed to air each time you open it up, but uh, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. So I gave them a tie for that, although I do like the rose gold because that helps me find that one a little bit easier. In terms of alcohol, both of these products are free from the drying, denatured types of alcohol, so it's always a good thing for sensitive or dry skin types. And then in terms of fragrance, neither of these have any fragrance ingredients, essential oils, and no noticeable scent with either of these products, so that's also a very good thing for sensitive skin. In terms of the manufacturing location, the Ordinary is made in Canada. Well, the Revolution Skincare is made in the UK. So overall, I call that one a tie as well. Although ties aren't the most exciting thing, uh, that's just where I am with them. So in terms of ease of use, so the Ordinary recommends applying this morning and evening. Obviously, after cleansing, toning, and essences, apply it in your serum step and then apply a moisturizer afterwards. However, the Ordinary goes on to say that you should not be using the Copper Peptide Buffet Serum in the same routine with uh, any strong antioxidants or vitamin C, retinols, or any alpha, beta, polyhydroxy exfoliants, which is an interesting thing because, especially for someone like me, I can't think of any routine that I don't use some type of good antioxidants. That's kind of what I love about my routine is looking for great antioxidants to use. Especially in my morning routine, there's not a morning where I don't go without using vitamin C. And there's usually an e not any evening where I'm going out with a retinol or an alpha hydroxy or beta hydroxy exfoliant serum. So if I went by that recommendation, I would probably never be able to use their copper peptide serum because... I don't want to miss out on retinol. That's an awesome anti-aging ingredient. I don't want to miss out on vitamin C in the morning. And I like to throw in exfoliants when and where I can because they help with pore size, clear skin, cell turnover, all of that good stuff. So uh, I know I've been asked a lot about it. And I know I've people have left comments on my routines where, oh my gosh, you used the copper peptide serum and then you used a vitamin C five steps later. And uh, to be 100% honest, I've done research, especially looking through PubMed and published research by scientists and groups and brands, and I just haven't seen any published research that shows that there is a negative conflict between copper peptides and antioxidants. So if you have seen some published research, certainly leave a comment and let me know because I want to read that. But overall, I am, I guess, throwing caution to the wind and I'm using this in the same routine as a vitamin C serum and I haven't noticed any negative effects. You certainly make your own decision how you want to use it, but I don't know. I really think a good morning routine almost always includes a vitamin C serum of some sort. It can certainly help with sun, uh, fighting off environmental stressors, free radicals. So then I'd never be able to use in the morning and... I don't know, in my evening, there, I'm almost always using a retinol or an alpha hydroxy serum or sometimes both. So leave a comment. I'm sure a lot of you guys will have thoughts on that. So, And if you have published research, let me know. Okay, in terms of ease of use for the skincare revolution, they say to use morning and evening. 
Uh, they don't mention contradictions with using it with antioxidants, so that's nice to see. I will say that if you're going to use the Skincare Revolution, you should try and use it as your only serum in that routine because otherwise, if you have it uh, applying it over or under another hydrating serum, I have noticed a tendency for it to pill up sometimes. So that's something to uh, take note of. So it just works better when you use it just as your serum and then use a moisturizer right afterwards. So uh, both those are pretty easy to use. Uh, as long as you don't take the ordinary's info a little bit too seriously. Um, so let me do a quick pH test of these real quick here. So there we go with the ordinary. And the pH for the ordinary looks to be right around 6. So no real issues with that. The skin's natural pH level is around 5.5. And then let me do the pH for the Skincare Revolution Serum. And that one looks to be pretty close to 5. So they're both pretty close to the similar pH. The Skincare Revolution is just a touch lower, but no real issues with that at all. So on to beneficial ingredients, which is the stuff I love to talk about. So the Ordinary... Uh, the first couple ingredients are slip ingredients, and after that we've got a good probiotic lactosulcus ferment. Uh, and then the fourth ingredient is copper peptide, which is nice to see. It uh, consists of 1%, and it's pretty high up there on the ingredient list, which is nice to see. Uh, then we've got several other peptides, including matrixol and argalox, which are two famous skin peptides because they're really proven to help with... Uh, fine lines and wrinkles and even deep set wrinkles. So those are a couple of great ones to see in a good product. Then we've got two different types of sodium hyaluronate for hydration, uh, over nine different amino acids. So we've got fructose, glucose, maltose, and urea. So it's got a longer ingredient list, but it's full of good stuff. So always nice to see. They've done an amazing job with their formulation. And uh, I know some, I'm sure I'll get comments, is the copper peptide serum worth the extra money over the original buffet? And I guess it just depends on if you subscribe to the theory that copper peptides are great for skin. And if you do, then it might be worth the extra, what is it, $10? For me, it is. Just I just find this serum to be a little bit more elegant. I'll have to do a versus between those two. I hadn't thought of that one. Okay, so for the skincare revolution beneficial ingredients... So the first several ingredients aren't very exciting. They're slip ingredients, water, glycerin, butylene glycol. Good for hydration, but that's about it. Then towards the end of the ingredient list, we've got the copper peptide in there and then two other peptides. Not the most exciting ingredient list. And uh, yeah, that's about all I can say. It's got a couple of good things in there, but other than that, it's just filler. So... Uh, for that, I gave The Ordinary the point pretty easily. And then we come to acneogenic ingredients. Uh, they both contain the same ingredient of note, which is butylene glycol, which is in almost everything. However, The Ordinary butylene glycol is towards the end of the ingredient list, where for skincare evolution, it's towards the top of the ingredient list. So The Ordinary gets that point just barely, just because I had to pick one, but not by much. Okay, in terms of cruelty-free status, both of these brands are cruelty-free, so that's awesome. No issues. I'd love to see a tie there. In terms of performance, so The Ordinary, I've repurchased this multiple times. Uh, just after using it for a couple weeks, you can notice a difference in the firmness of skin, a slight reduction in fine lines, and an increase just in skin plumpness boost of hydration and also moisture retention. Uh, in terms of the skincare revolution, when, when I apply this one, I notice an immediate boost of moisture and that's about it. And then once you rinse it off, the effects kind of fade. I didn't notice any real boost in plumpness or any real reduction in fine lines. I just Personally, I just don't think there's enough of the good stuff in the Revolution skincare to really make a huge difference other than just the immediate 
increase in hydration from when you apply it. So for performance, I had to give the ordinary that point. Then we come to price. And the Ordinary, they're both the same size, 30 milliliters, one ounce. The Ordinary retails for $28.90, so not $29, $28.90. Well, the Skincare Revolution retails for about $14. Although the Skincare Revolution, if you shop at Ulta or like Skin Store or some of those places, it's frequently on sale or buy one, get one half off. So it's definitely the bargain between the two. But sometimes the extra $14 is well worth the investment. So for price, Revolution Skincare, Skincare Revolution, whatever, gets the point. Then in terms of the it factor, so the Ordinary contains a really amazing amount of peptides, beneficial ingredients, copper peptides, matrixyl, probiotic ingredients. Really nice to see. It's still relatively affordable. It's cheaper than a lot of just generic Olay serums, which are just kind of not the most exciting products, some of them, but they're decent. Um, you know, and I, I think it's interesting. So many brands have tried to copy the buffet and the improvement on the buffet. In my opinion, the improvement is this serum, but nobody can really come close to doing it. I'm not exactly sure why. I mean, the ingredient list is out there. They know what they need to do. I don't know if the ingredients are just so expensive, so they're just trying to do the cheapest knockoff they possibly can. But, uh, yeah, no matter how many brands come out with a knockoff of this, The Ordinary is still the best one on the market. It's a steal for the price, fragrance-free, denatured alcohol-free, cruelty-free, and still relatively affordable. Uh, in terms of the skincare revolution, obviously it's... it's not a bad serum. I mean, it doesn't contain any bad things, so that's a good thing. But it just doesn't contain enough good things to really get me excited about using it. I'd probably not repurchase it, but I've repurchased The Ordinary several times. And uh, for the it factor, I gave the point to The Ordinary. Hands down, no questions asked. So overall, I added in the ties into this score, because there were several ties at the beginning. So The Ordinary has 10 points, and The Skincare Revolution has 7 and uh, the Skincare Revolution only won one category, which was price. The rest were all ties. So hands down, The Ordinary Buffet plus Copper Peptides is the way to go if you can afford the extra $14. It's well worth it. And a little bit goes a long way, and you'll be, you'll be happy if you decide on this one. There's nothing wrong with The Skincare Revolution. It just isn't as nearly exciting or beneficial. So anyway... Those are my thoughts on it. I'm sure I'll have a lot of comments, so I'll certainly leave one. And again, if you have any published research about copper peptides and actives and antioxidants, leave a comment too. I'm interested in seeing that. So anyway, thank you guys so much, and I will see you tomorrow.